welcome you all to principles of organic synthesis. This is our first lecture. Today we will start the base catalyzed carbon carbon bond formation. The base catalyzed carbon carbon bond formation is closely related to their formation from organometallic metallic reagents. In both methods, the negatively polarized carbon reacts with electrophilic carbon of carbonyl groups and related compounds like alkyl halides. The scope of the base catalyzed reactions depends on three facts. A wide range of organic compounds is able to form carbon ions. For example, if we have substituted with electron withdrawing group like carbonyl group or nitro, this can be easily deprotonated, you can generate the carbon ion. These carbon ions undergo reaction with the electrophilic carbon in variety of environments. For example, you take carbonyl compounds, it can undergo addition reaction. You can also take alpha beta unsaturated alkene, it can undergo Michael reaction. And similarly, if you have alkyl halide, it can undergo substitution reaction. The basicity of the reagent used to abstract the proton may be widely varied. For example, if you look at these two substrates, the acidity of these protons is different from this. Therefore, you can use variety of base depends upon the acidity of the proton. Now, let us look at the first example in this topic, the aldol reaction. This slide shows the reaction of acetaldehyde in the presence of sodium hydroxide to give aldol product. One of the acetaldehyde undergoes reaction with the sodium hydroxide and the deprotonation takes place to generate the carbon ion. So, this carbon ion exists in equilibrium as the enolate. So, this enolate now can undergo addition with carbonyl group of another aldehyde. This electrophilic nature, it can undergo one to addition, you get the aldol product. This alkoxide can be protonated to give the aldol product. Here, what you do and you make a bond between this carbon, carbon ion and with this carbonyl group of another aldehyde, you make a new carbon-carbon bond. In this process, you generate the chiral center and we will see some examples later. This very, very important transformation in organic synthesis. If you happen to see a multi-step synthesis in general, you will be able to find the application of aldol reaction. It works very well. Now, let us look at some more examples. Aldol, whatever you generate from the dimerization of acetaldehyde, that aldol can be further converted into alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. This is called crotonaldehyde by dehydration. When you heat this aldol product in the presser base, it can undergo dehydration to give this alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. The mechanism of this transformation is shown here. This base can deprotonate the acidic proton to give, generate the unilate. The unilate now can convert into the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound by elimination of hydroxide ion. So, the whole process is called aldol condensation. Addition of aldehyde to give the aldol 
further dehydration to alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde the whole process is called aldol condensation so this reaction can be carried out the presence of catalytic amount of base the substrate can be aldehyde or ketone one of the substrate should be able to form enolate that enolate can undergo reaction with other aldehyde it may have alpha ch bond or not but it can undergo addition with this carbonyl group to give the aldol product that can be further converted into alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound by dehydration now let us look at some of the intramolecular reactions so so far we have seen simple example dimerization of acetaldehyde to aldol then dehydration to crotonaldehyde this slide shows examples for the intramolecular aldol reaction the first example when the base can deprotonate then you generate the carbon ion this carbon ion can exist in resonance form as enolate now this can undergo addition with this intramolecularly with this carbonyl compound and you will have so this ketone it can undergo since you carry out the reaction under heating it can undergo dehydration to give the cyclopentenone derivative so first one of this methyl group which undergoes deprotonation and to give this enolate that enolate undergo intramolecular cyclization to give this tertiary alcohol derivative so this can be converted into this uh, alpha beta unsaturated ketone cyclic ketone by dehydration the second example again you have two methyl groups you also have this also has acidic proton the base can uh, remove for example if it removes this proton then you form this carbon ion which can undergo intramolecular cyclization to give this compound this can lead to the dehydration to give this cyclic compound so there are four uh, type of acidic protons are there and in this case selectively this proton is deprotonated so then you can get this compound on the other hand if you deprotonate this so then you will end up with 7 membered ring 
and the formation of 5 and 6 member ring are more favored therefore, the T protonation of this proton leads to this product comparing to that. It can deprotonate, but they since they exist in the equilibrium formation of this whatever carbon ion here that undergoes cyclization to give this compound. Now, let us look at the other example. Here again you have two acidic C H protons, the base in this case deprotonates selectively this proton so that you can form this unilate. which can undergo intramolecular cyclization to give this product which can undergo dehydration give this bicyclic alpha beta unsaturated keto. On the other hand, if you deprotonate this proton, then you will form 4 member ring it is not it is difficult. Therefore, formation of this 6 member ring favor in this case the deprotonation selectively takes place from this uh, CH bond of the methyl group and then you get this bicyclic keto. So far, we have seen inter and intramolecular aldol reactions. Now, let us look at the reaction between two different aldehydes or ketones. So, the first example, whatever we have seen, the dimerization of acetaldehyde, there is acetaldehyde only is involved as substrate. One of the aldehyde undergoes deprotonation to give the enolate that undergoes reaction with another aldehyde carbonyl group to give the aldol product. In the later case we have seen the reaction of ketone which undergoes intramolecular cyclization first the formation of enolate takes place that leads to intramolecular cyclization followed by dehydration to give the cyclic compound. In this slide we are going to see the reaction between two different substrate two different aldehydes it can be aldehydes or ketones. In this slide the reaction between acetaldehyde and propanaldehyde is given. Let us look at this reaction. The deprotonation of this acidic proton by base can generate this enolate. This enolate can undergo reaction with another molecule of acetaldehyde 1 to addition. So, in that way you will get this aldol product. Basically, this dimerization of acetaldehyde what we have seen the first slide. Alternatively, this unilate also can undergo reaction with the carbonyl group of another aldehyde propanaldehyde. You can get aldol product, but here the reaction of both propanaldehyde and acetaldehyde is involved. The enolate derived from acetaldehyde acts as a nucleophile which undergoes addition with this carbonyl group of propanaldehyde to give the addition product. Here the carbonyl group of propanaldehyde acts as a electrophile you get the older product. Similarly, you can also deprotonate this acidic proton from propanaldehyde using base, then you can end up with this enolate. This enolate can react with another molecule of propanaldehyde. This acts as a nucleophile, you can add this acts as a electrophile and you can add you can end up with this aldol product. 
this is nothing but again dimerization of the propanolaldehyde. On the other hand, this enolate can also undergo addition with this carbonyl group of acetaldehyde. Here it can act as a electrophile and you can end up with this aldol product. So, in this case there is a possibility of the formation of four products. The first one is dimerization of acetaldehyde, the last one again dimerization of propanolaldehyde, the middle two involve the reaction of both aldehydes. You can see here this is the propanolaldehyde part, this is acetaldehyde part here and this acetaldehyde part, this propanolaldehyde part you make bond between these two carbons. So, these two are called cross aldol product because they are formed from the reaction of two different aldehydes. So, now let us look at one more example. Here the reaction of acetone with benzaldehyde is shown and here the acetone has the acidic proton alba CH bond which can undergo deprotonation to give this enolate. So, this enolate can react with another molecule of acetone you can get this aldol product. Alternatively this enolate can also react with carbonyl group of benzaldehyde. So, you can get this aldol product that can undergo dehydration to give this alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. If you look at this the electrophilicity of this carbonyl group with this one this more electrophilic nature the reactions generally favored to form this aldol that can undergo dehydration to give this product. In addition to that this aldol can also due to sterilization can go back to the enolate through retro aldol reaction in this way the reaction can be pushed forward to give this as a major compound. Here if you look at it this also an example for crossed aldol condensation, but one of this carbonyl compound has the alba CH bond which undergoes deprotonation to give the enolate. The other carbonyl compound does not have the alba CH bond therefore, it acts as electrophile and the addition reaction takes place to give the aldol product as a major compound. So, far we have seen the reaction between two different aldehydes to give the crossed aldol products. Now, let us look at the formation of enolates depends upon the substrate. For example, let us look at this ketone. You have methyl group as well this side you have the alkyl group. Both alba CH protons can undergo deprotonation you can generate enolate this side or that side. If you carry out depends upon the reaction conditions. If you carry out the reaction at low temperature using strong base like LDA. Short reaction time this LDA can deprotonate the less sterically hindered proton to give this enolate. This enolate exists in equilibrium what may happen here it now can act as a base. This reaction is, is to carry out in THF a protic solvent. So, it can act as a base you can deprotonate the alba CH bond of the substrate 
For example, this one, the arrow should be like this. Deprotonate, you can generate the unilate, where you can generate the starting material also. Now, look at this one, this is more stable, more substituted unilate. This is called thermodynamic unilate, this is called kinetic unilate. This unilate can also be generated directly from the carbonyl compound using weak base like hydroxide ion at high temperature using long reaction time. Because as you form this one, it can convert into this more stable thermodynamic enolate. So, it depends upon the reaction condition. You can generate the kinetic enolate or thermodynamic enolate as major intermediate that can undergo reaction with aldehyde, you will get the aldol product, product accordingly. This reaction has been well explored now and therefore, you can try to control, control the formation of the enolate and if you form this one selectively, this can undergo addition with your aldehyde, you can get the addition product from this carbon ion or alternatively, you can also try to convert this enolate to that then this can undergo reaction, you will get a different product. The formation of thermodynamic enolate can also be favored when you use protic solvent like tertiary butanol in the presence of tertiary butoxide, sodium or potassium tertiary butoxide, you can form this enolate from the carbonyl compound. Now, let us look at the diastereo selectivity. Depends upon the substrates, there is a possibility of the formation of diastereomers. For example, if you take this carbonyl compound, if you deprotonate this proton, you can make this enolate. This enolate can undergo reaction with your aldehyde carbonyl group. you can make the following stereoisomers. So, if you look at this one, this is called syn, yes, both are the same side, these two are called anti. You can see here, this is alpha, this is beta, they are anti products and there is a possibility of formation of four stereoisomers. The formation of the stereoisomers can be explained through the six member transition state as is shown here. The base can deprotonate the alba CH bond to form this enolate, this is Z enolate or you can also form E enolate. And if you look at this, they exist in the equilibrium. Depends upon the size of this substituent, then it is converted to Z enolate or E enolate, the concentration, then depends upon the, the size of these R groups. Once you form the Z enolate, it can undergo addition with this aldehyde carbonyl group. to give this compound, syn compound. The formation of the syn stereochemistry can be explained through this six membered transition state. So, this is your unolate and this is your aldehyde portion. If you look at here, so, the, this both are you can see here this R group here in the equatorial position, this is the axial position here. Yeah, they are trans, the aldehyde is shown here again the bulkier substituent the equatorial position here and your hydrogen is here. When you do the addition reaction make bond between this carbon, this carbon ion 
this uh, carbonyl group carbon then you make this intermediate. If you see the relation stereochemistry. So, this hydrogen in equatorial this is an axial. So, axial equatorial both hydrogen should be cis. So, 1 to axial, axial equatorial and this is uh, cis. So, you get this stereochemistry. On the other hand, if the enolate is E enolate trans, now this can undergo reaction as we have seen here and now you will have because this both are same side cis, you can write both are in equatorial position of this. Uh, chair like transition state, you have the double bond here. Now, this can undergo reaction with this carbonyl group. You can get it here. Now, if you look at the stereochemistry, the hydrogen here in axial position, this axial. So, 1, 2 axial, axial is going to be trans see here and this is hydrogen other stereochemistry trans here. So, if you generate E unilate that can undergo reaction with your aldehyde you make anti stereoisomer. On the other hand if you make Z unilate it can undergo reaction with your aldehyde you make a syn stereoisomer. So, I have written this one, the other also possibility is there, this also can be written like this. The relation between this is enantiomers. Similarly, the relation between this is enantiomers. So, now let us look at one more example on the diastereo selectivity. Here the reaction between the ketone ethyl and uh, tetrabutyl ketone with the benzalate is shown here. When you react this ketone with the LDA at negative temperature you form this Z enolate. This enolate as we have seen just now can undergo addition reaction with the benzaldehyde. You make syn compound as major product. Diastereomeric ratio between this is 98 to 2. So, this is syn the anti compound ratio is Two percent. So this formation of this compound once again can be understood through this six-member transition state. This can undergo addition with this aldehyde, and you make this. If you see the relationship between these two chiral center, this is axial, and this is equatorial. Axial equatorial one to e e is going to be cis you get this syn stereochemistry. If you look at this example here instead of tertiary butyl isopropyl is involved here. This can also undergo deprotonation to form the enolate can undergo reaction with the benzaldehyde at the same temperature here the ratio the syn anti is reduced here. You can see here when you have the tertiary butyl group, the ratio the 
between the sin and the anti is about 98 to 2. The diastereal selectivity uh, about 96 percent. Here uh, about 50 percent. This is because of the bulkiness of the substituent. When you have the bulky substituent, predominantly formation of this enolate takes place. Through this transient state, it gives us a major compound. When you have the less bulkier isopropyl group, there is a possibility of the formation of Z as well as some amount of E enolate that also can undergo reaction with this one, you can generate the anti stereoisomer. Now, let us look at the other example where the reaction of cyclopentanone with the lithium hydroxide shown to form this enolate. This can form only the E enolate. Once you form this enolate that can undergo reaction with this aldehyde, the reaction of this isopropyl aldehyde can give this addition product. The formation of this product can now explain through the six member transient state. And as you can see here, and this enolate can undergo reaction with this aldehyde. It can give this stereochemistry. If you see the relation between these two hydrogens, this is axial, this is equatorial. Axial equatorial is going to be cis. So, therefore, when you have this enolate, predominantly the formation of this anti stereoisomer form takes place. So, in summary in this case when you have that means the nature of the substituent is very important to control the stereochemistry of the aldol product. If you form exclusively Z enolate that can lead to syn product. On the other hand if you have E enolate that can undergo reaction with the aldehyde to give the anti stereoisomer. So, this slide shows the formation of both the E and Z enolate. This enolate can be reacted with the TMS chloride in situ, you can form the TMS ether. They have different boiling point, you can try to separate them by distillation. Once you separate this silyl ethers, you can try to react with the fluoride ion, you can get selectively the Z or E enolate that can be further react with the aldehyde to get selectively the sin or the stereoisomer. And this slide shows two examples. And the first one involves the intermolecular reaction between two aldehydes. Here butyraldehyde undergoes reaction with another butyraldehyde in the presence of sodium hydroxide to give this alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. As we have seen here, this deprotonation of alpha CH bond of one of the aldehyde can generate this carbon ion, which can undergo reaction with another aldehyde. carbonyl group to give this aldol product. This can undergo dehydration
this alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. And in this case, look at it, you have this alpha C H bond, there are four alpha C H bonds are there. Suppose, if you deprotonate this, you will form this carbon ion which can undergo addition with this carbonyl group to the gives aldol product that can undergo dehydration and this is the major product under these conditions, it can form the more substituted enolate that can undergo reaction with this carbonyl group. You make the five membered ring. On the other hand, what may happen here? This also can undergo deprotonation. If it undergoes, you will have this enolate which can undergo intramolecular cyclization you get this aldol product that can lead to dehydration to give this as a minor product. So, here two examples shown once again the reaction between two different aldehydes dimerization of butaldehyde the presence of sodium hydroxide to give the aldol that can lead to dehydration to give this alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. Now, another example we have seen a diketone where you can try to generate the more substituted enolate that can undergo intramolecular cyclization to give this substituted cyclopentinous major product comparing to that in this you form the more substituted enolate that leads to the formation of this compound where here you form this enolate less substituted one that can undergo cyclization to give this compound. So, this slide shows some of the reactions based on all all reaction. The first one is novonical condensation. So, this active methylene is bonded with electron withdrawing group. So, when you react with the base, the base can deprotonate, it can undergo addition with this aldehyde. Uh, this reaction involves aromatic aldehyde, does not have the alpha CH bond can undergo addition followed by dehydration you get this unsaturated compound. And another one is Gleison Smith reaction where the reaction of active methylene compound with aromatic aldehyde is demonstrated in the presence of base. In this you end up with alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound first addition followed by dehydration give this compound. The next one is Henry reaction, where the reaction of aldehydes ketones with nitroalkanes in the presence of base gives the nitroaldol product that also can undergo dehydration to give this alpha beta unsaturated nitro compound. 
the mechanism of Henry reaction similar to Aldol reaction whatever we have seen just now. And in the case of non alkyl condensation the base there are two possibilities the base can deprotonate this proton you can generate this carbon ion which can undergo reaction with your and when you use as amine as a base. So, in this case the active methylene this deprotonation of this protons amine can give this carbon ion which can undergo reaction with your aldehyde this when you react with acid followed by dehydration you can give this unsaturated compound as the product. Alternatively what may happen this aldehyde also can react with this amine can form imine. So, which can undergo reaction with your carbon ion that you generate then you can get the addition product both possibilities are there. The mechanism of the Henry reaction is similar to the Aldol reaction. In summary uh, today we have seen the Aldol reaction is one of the important transformation organic synthesis to make carbon carbon bond. Here the aldehydes ketones serve as the substrate. The reaction can be carried out in the presence of base catalytic amount of base. So, one of the aldehyde or ketone undergoes deprotonation to give this carbon ion which exists in the form of enolate acts as a nucleophile which undergoes reaction with carbonyl group of another aldehyde or ketone which acts as electrophile to give the addition product that is called aldol. That aldol can be further reacted under heating to give dehydrated alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. Then we have seen the formation of enolates depends upon the substrate and reaction conditions you can try to selectively form kinetic or thermodynamic enolates that can lead to selective stereoisomers. For example, if you can form selectively thermodynamic enolate that enolate can be further depends upon the substituent can be reacted with aldehyde you can get whether syn or anti stereoisomer we have seen some examples where we have seen the diastereo selectivity this reaction has been well explored in the literature the later we will study some of the example for asymmetric version you can try to control the stereochemistry of the product whether selectively syn or anti stereoisomer. Then we have seen some of the examples which are based on aldol reaction. First one is non alkyl condensation then we have seen Claisen Smith reaction following that we have seen Henry reaction which also very important reaction has been well explored in the literature. And the mechanism of the Henry reaction is similar to that of aldol reaction. 
with this let us conclude this lecture thank you very much